Good morning, I'm Kristen Bandy with Arkansas Children's and we're here live talking to Dr. Jessica Snowden, the Division Chief of Pediatric Infectious Disease. Good morning, Dr. Snowden, thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure, thanks for having me. So we will jump right in. Uh, I know that you deal with this a lot. So real quick, tell us a little bit about what you do here. Sure. I'm the Chief of Pediatric Infectious Disease here at the Children's Hospital, which means we help both take care of people who are sick with serious infections or unusual infections. And in times like now, with an infectious disease that's infecting all of us all over the community, do a lot of work with helping hospitals come up with plans to keep everyone safe and helping teach our communities about what they need to know. You've been busy lately then, right? It's been an interesting time. I mean, all of us go into infectious disease because we like to learn new things. We like the fact that the world's always changing. But the last two years has been a lot of that, I think, for all of us as, as both pediatricians and as parents and everything else. It's been an interesting couple of years with all the things that we've learned about a disease we didn't even know existed two years ago. So it's definitely been quite the roller coaster. Of course, in everything you do the last two years. So as a parent with Omicron happening, how, how should we feel? How nervous should we be with this new variant? Yeah, it's a good question. And I, you know, in full transparency, I'm the mom of a 10 year old who may wander behind me at some point here, who is currently home with Omicron, right? I sent him to school because I know that's the best place for him to be. But I also knew that given how contagious this variant is, it was likely that he was going to get it. And as a mom, that made me nervous. As a pediatrician, I remind myself that we're really, really fortunate right now that the Omicron variant seems to be a lot milder than what we were seeing earlier in the year when we had the Delta variant this summer and into fall. So while we are still seeing kids get sick and end up in the hospital, they seem to not be as sick as what we were seeing earlier and seem to be doing better with it, particularly those who are vaccinated. In our house, Oliver is vaccinated, and so he was cranky for a few days and then kind of got back to normal. Um, so we know that kids who are vaccinated are doing really well with it, and most other kids are doing well with it. That being said, it makes all of us nervous. None of us like to have our kids sick. And we know that COVID-19 is unpredictable. We can't always tell which kid is going to get seriously ill. We know that people who have other medical conditions are at higher risk of getting seriously sick, but we also know that occasionally perfectly healthy kids get sick. I think the thing for all of us as parents to keep in mind is that you've been through lots of illnesses with your kid. If there are things that seem like they're different than usual, if they're sicker than usual, they're having trouble breathing, they seem like they're not as alert or they're not drinking enough for you, those things that always set off our radar as parents that something's different and wrong with our kid still apply here. Those are the things we wanna look out for. For most kids, they're gonna recover from this with just making sure they get plenty of fluids, using a humidifier to make it a little bit easier for them to breathe, using Tylenol or Motrin if they have a fever or achiness that they're feeling bad from, and then letting time take its course. They should recover just fine. With the symptoms of this particular strain being so similar to the things that we already experience in the winter time and previously with other sicknesses, how do you go from this is just a cold to this might be Omicron and we need to kind of lay low? That's an excellent question. Right now, we should assume everything is Omicron. I have lots of people who are saying, well, you know, this is just croup. Well, croup looks like Omicron right now. Um, a lot of people mm -hmm. who have the Omicron variant are getting symptoms that look like a cold. We're seeing things that are a little bit different than what we saw with the Delta variant. Some people are showing up with just a headache or thinking that what they're having is allergy symptoms or thinking that, oh, I did lots of exercise yesterday. That's why I'm achy. There are all kinds of symptoms and then people are ending up testing positive for Omicron. So I think for everybody, if you've got symptoms of any illness right now, getting tested either with a home test or going to one of the many places around the city that are doing PCR testing and laying low until you're feeling better is really important to protect everybody else around you. 
because one of the most important things to know is that for most of us, and definitely for most of our children, the Omicron variant is gonna be mild for them. But that's not true for everyone. And so it's our responsibility to keep everybody around us safe. If you're sick at all, even if you think it's just allergies or just a cold, stay home until you're feeling better. That protects the people around you who need us to take care of them right now. That leads into another question. So you have the symptoms, but you don't have any fever. You feel mostly fine. You have a runny nose, maybe a cough. Your kid doesn't have a fever. Do you keep them home? In the absence of a fever, normally you think, oh, they're fine. They can go to school. Where are we at with that right now? It's a really good question. So one of the things that we know, particularly for children, they don't always have fever with us. Um, so one of the things that you'll see is that they'll have all the other symptoms, but no fever. So that's a little bit less reliable. That's where it becomes really important to wait until you're starting to improve before we have you go back to mm -hmm. school or back to daycare and making sure that particularly for our school age kids, they're wearing their mask as much as possible. So wearing your mask is gonna be part of what helps protect everybody around you just in case this is Omicron, right? So that's what helps keep you from accidentally infecting someone else if this is Omicron instead of something else. You mentioned vaccines earlier. I got COVID before I got the chance to get my booster. I had just hit my mark where I could get the booster. Now I've had COVID. Do I still need to go get my booster? Absolutely. One of the things that we recommend is as soon as you get out of isolation or quarantine, whichever you're in, so if you're exposed and home because you're exposed or if you're sick and home because you're sick, as soon as you're able to go back out into the community, we definitely recommend that you go and get your booster shot as soon as you can. We know that it really increases the protection you're gonna get from the particularly related to the Omicron variant. The other thing that we know is having had COVID with one of the prior strains before Omicron, really doesn't protect you very much from Omicron. So even if you think, well, I've had, I got COVID this fall, I'm okay, that protection is not good enough to keep you from getting sick with Omicron. So if you haven't been boosted, please do so as soon as you can. If you haven't been vaccinated yet, it's not too late. Please do so as soon as you can. Dr. Snowden, thank you so much for joining us today. Is there anything else that you would like our viewers to know before we let you go? I think the important thing for all of us to keep in mind, I know we're tired. We're all tired and want to get back to normal. The way for this spike to be over is for as many of us as possible to get vaccinated. That helps keep these big spikes from happening over and over again. And make sure that if you think you're sick at all, stay home. You could be saving someone else's life by staying home and wearing your mask. Please, please do that to protect everybody in our community who's relying on you. So important. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for everything that you're doing. It's my pleasure. Thank you. We will put a link in the comment section and in this live description for COVID-19 resources and FAQs. Thank you for joining us.